Now, one of the best stories in the D-League this season was Idaho Stampede center Lance Allred getting the Gatorade call up to the Cleveland Cavaliers and becoming the first legally deaf player in NBA history. Yeah, I was goalie for the, my soccer team. And now Platts can be basketball and stuff, and I got a floor burn right here. Wow. And I, scared. Man. I opened up my present, and that actually all we did when we went to the Nintendo game. And we went to Microsoft Pet so about nothing. And I'm going to walk you through my story, and most importantly, I'm going to tell you how to be lions and how to be leaders, and how to be leaders of your own lives. I have failed and failed and failed so many times, and I talked about my comfort zones, that honestly, I wear these tiny hearing aids and I had the big ones when I was a kid, but I was born in a small town, Montana, so I didn't have any amenities to learn sign language, so every day I was pushed outside of my comfort zone and made to learn to speak and talk, and I was the speech therapy until I was 16, 17 years old. And so I never had a safety bubble, a comfort zone, and we all have this stigma towards failure, and why? Why do we care if we fail? Simply, for most of us, it's because we care what others think about it. We're afraid they're gonna judge us. We're, gonna, we're afraid that we're not good enough. When really, for me, failure means growth. It means you're stepping outside your comfort zone. It means that you're willing to put yourself out there and be uncomfortable. If you're not failing, you're not growing. You're not challenging yourself. You're staying inside your bubble and you're being mediocre. There's only one way I define failure, and that's being mediocre, playing it safe, staying inside your bubble. This is my very first game in the NBA. I played with the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James in 2008. And yeah, I was the first legally deaf player in NBA history, and it was an exciting day. And I'll show you what I learned about being a leader along the way, what I found out about myself, and what is the essence of leadership? Let's talk about that. The essence of leadership is perseverance. The essence of perseverance is grit. The essence of grit is choice. Do you choose day in and day out to get back up one more time? Every day you have a choice. The reason why I'm legally deaf so it's something called an RH factor. I had to be rushed to the hospital where there was a local Johns Hopkins educator resident who specialized in RH because he was an RH baby himself. So dumb luck. And he tested my Billy Rubin titer count and it was off the charts. I should have been dead. And I was in an incubator for over two weeks. And when he finally released me, he told my parents there's no reason why he's alive. I would publish this in the Journal of American Medicine, but no one would believe me. There is a reason why I'm alive. It's simply because I chose to be. And remember this, I say the essence of grit is choice. And we're gonna expand on that. Choice is gonna be a huge storyline, overarching storyline as I walk you through this journey. Now, there's no easy way to say this, so I'll just come right out and say it. I was a really good looking kid. <laughs> Look at that handsome devil. But about this age, about 20 months, they discovered that I was severely hearing impaired, 80% hearing loss, and I had to be fitted with hearing aids. And I hated my hearing aids, because my hearing aids and my speech therapy reminded me that I wasn't normal. I just wanted to be normal. But here's the thing about being a leader. Being a leader is lonely. You're never gonna quite fit in, but that's not your path. I didn't start playing basketball until I was 14. And so I was always just a little bit different. I never quite fit in all the time. So, but that's because I wasn't supposed to fit in. I was a leader and that was my path. The first principle of perseverance, I have five principles and I'll walk you through it. The first one is accountability. Now, who can tell me I looked through your keys of success? There's a very, Parallel one. What key to success is basically synonymous with this one? Ownership. ownership, exactly. Accountability and ownership. 
I couldn't play basketball with my hearing aids in because of sweat and concussion issues. So I'm basically out there having to be a very visual player, having to rely on remembering and playing it like a game of chess. That's how I approach basketball. But without playing with the hearing aids, there were some issues sometimes. But here's what I did. I said, if I'm going to play basketball, I am never, ever going to use my hearing as an excuse. If a coach, through all my years, refused to use a hand signal call, and he was screaming a play, and I couldn't read his lips from across the court, and I, and I ran the wrong play, if he would freak out at me and just throw a temper tantrum, I could have very easily said, coach, I couldn't hear the play. Instead, what I would do, I would simply say this, you're right, coach, I forgot the play. I was never going to prove people right with my excuses. Because all my life, people have been telling me what I can and can't do. I simply choose not to listen. I can't hear very well anyway. So that's not a problem. So I only got one job offer. That was to go play for the Idaho Stampede in Boise, Idaho. They were the minor league team for the Utah Jazz. Anyone want to take a guess how much I made a month at that job? What they paid me? Do you want to take a guess? You. Yeah, you. Yeah. Throw a number out there. 5000 a month, right? You think that would, that, that's what would be somewhat decent? $900 a month. That's what I was willing to take. And I only made that job, turns out, $900 a month to be the media guy. I was being pigeonholed and you're going to have this happen. You're going to have professors and bosses that are going to pigeonhole you and minimize you and not see your full potential when you know you can do so much more. And I had a choice to make. And my choice was this. Fine. I'm going to learn how to do a TV interview. I'm going to learn how to do a radio interview. I'm going to learn how to do public speaking and talk to the kids at the schools, something that I now do today for a living, that allowed me to transition out of basketball. I was pigeonholed to what was considered a very demeaning position on the basketball team because it meant I wasn't good enough to actually play. I just had to be at the end of the bench and do all the PR stuff, sign balls, kiss babies, and all that stuff. But I said, fine, I'm going to learn how to do it. I developed those skills while I was being pigeonholed, skills that now allow me to make more money today as a speaker than I ever did as a basketball player. Can you believe that? Yeah? So, what's going to happen is people are going to pigeonhole you. You're going to get a job that's demeaning, that isn't to your full potential, but learn everything there is to know about that job and then learn everything there is to know about everyone else's job so that when you get promoted or you start your own company, you know how to more efficiently run a company. That's what you do. What do you say? Fine. Watch me. But this isn't to say it was easy. Again, I was only making $900 a month. I was stressed out. I still had medical bills to pay and I had bleeding ulcers and I was stressed. I was, because there was a time there I didn't play for like six straight weeks, and I'm traveling all these tiny jets like Bismarck and Sioux Falls, South Dakota in the middle of winter time, just freezing my butt off at the end of the bench in these cold arenas because I don't even play. I'm thinking, yeah, this, this sucks. It does. My mom called me one day. She said, Lance, why? Why do you keep doing this? Why? Why do you get up every day? and keep doing this to yourself. I said, because I choose to. I choose one more time every day to get up and put my shoes on and go give it everything I have. It's my choice. It's always my choice. And I know if I function from a place of integrity, true to myself, never compromising who I am to win other people's love or whatnot, if I function from a place of integrity, I cannot fail. You cannot fail if you function with integrity. This is a promise I will give you. And within one week, something crazy happened. This is February. 
of that season, within one week, starting center broke his leg, and then the backup center got recalled to the Seattle Sonics. And so by default, I became the starting center. And the coach sat me down before the game. He says, okay, we have another player coming in tomorrow. He'll, he'll start the next game. But we, Lance, we just need you to play safe. Don't try to do too much. Just play defense or, and rebound and just run the offense. Don't worry about scoring like 10 points or anything like that. Just maybe get like two or four points off of rebounds or something like that, and you'll be fine. I'm like, okay, all right, sure, right, right. So that very first game, I'm going to give them on my very first game as a starter 30 points and 10 rebounds. 